And this woman's conference, and there's a sister that I would meet year after year after year after year, and her story was always very similar. It was always, please, uh, Dr. Anya, make dua for me. I'm trying to raise my children Muslim and to pray, um, but I don't have any support from my husband. He doesn't pray, and he's not interested in, in trying. And on top of it all, it seemed like every year was getting worse and worse. He was kind of spiraling into uh, difficult habits. and in, in this case, it was uh, literally alcoholism. And she said to me, how do you convince children to pray and to keep up that fard that Allah has asked us to when there's literally not just someone not praying, but openly sinning in front of us. And I kept giving her advice and saying the thing I would hear my teacher say very often, never, ever, ever downplay the power of dua. When you think you've tried everything you can possibly try. Then one year, in one of the conferences, this, a sister came up, and she said, Dr. Anya, and uh, you don't recognize me? And she's like, I'm so-and-so. And I'm like, so-and-so? Wallahi, like, I truly, truly could not recognize her. And she said, oh, I have to tell you, I need dua. And I thought, I'm going to hear the same story that I've been hearing for many years. And she said, but this time it had to do with her daughter. And I said, khair. And she said, um, she got in a terrible car wreck. Oh, subhanAllah. And she said, oh, no, no, no. She's, she's okay now. I said, okay, alhamdulillah. But you have to understand, that is a good thing. And I said, how could a car wreck possibly be a good thing? And then she said, when that happened, the person who had hit her was a drunk driver. And for whatever reason, it snapped her husband, who'd been in this like alcoholic stupor for so long, snapped him out of it. And she, when you know somebody who's been drinking for a long time, you can't just sort of cold turkey very easily. You cannot. SubhanAllah. It takes time. But this man, cold turkey. And then she points over there where the masjid was, and she goes, he's there. And I was like, he's there? <laughs> this man who like refused to pray, who refused to refuse, like everything. And we would take counseling, refuse counseling. Re imam, talk to an imam, refuse imam. Wouldn't even step foot in the masjid. Was literally in the musallah. And she said he cold turkey, stopped the alcohol, got clean, got better, started praying. And he was now fully involved in this family after years and years and years and years of her complaints. And she said, you always said the power of dua. And I thought, la ilaha illallah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, not always do you hear the, the full ending of a story necessarily, but this was amazing. Look at the story of the sister. You know what she said to me? She said, I'm making dua that my husband would finally come back to Islam and stop the sin that he was doing. I didn't expect that, uh, that the Al-Mujib, the one who responds, would respond with a wreck, car wreck for my daughter. He, she didn't expect that was going to be the circle of response. But a lover chooses to do things the way he chooses. And so even when you feel like a person, you're going to give up on them, don't, because Allah doesn't give up on us. Even if you've given up on yourself about something, don't, because Ar-Rahim has not given up on you. And even if you feel like your sins are mountains, there is nothing mountainous to Allah Azza wa Jalla.